Lassus System, early 2670. Vice Admiral Wolf, TRSC Sword of Reckoning. After the Seventh Fleet departed Aloma, they made their way to the heart of the system, Lasu, and its most prominent station that orbited above. The planet was just a pale gray dot against the canvas of the void, and it had no moon, only the station. However, from reports he had read, Lasu Station was the most prominent station in the outer colonies and acted as the central hub for trade. Scans had revealed no enemy presence, Admiral, Minerva spoke, and her Roman appearance in a manner of focused light into the shape of an ancient idol. Even with the use of the long-range scanners, all stations appear to be offline. Can you identify any signs of those ships that ambushed the advanced group in the last system? After several moments, she would return with a reply. I detect no such anomalies present in the system. I shall continue to monitor for any abnormal fluctuations. Let's keep our wits about us, Wolf ordered. Do you think we can commandeer the station for its resources, Minerva? With my records, they do produce a purer version of our hydrogen-based fuel. The result is prolonged standard operating times, unlike our own. It would be best if we can utilize the station. Understood, sir. She then set herself aside on the central holographic display table of the station and the celestial body it orbited. She zoomed out and revealed the other four gas giants with their series of blinking red lights that indicated their non-operational status. There were a series of other mining stations about the gas giants, but further inquiry revealed they offered the same silent fate. However, Wolf had noticed a large ring at the edge of the system. It was fragmented and was more prominent than the station they had previously set their eyes on. Minerva, what can you tell me about that structure at the edge of the system? She zoomed the object in question, and it revealed that it was indeed a circular structure fragmented into four parts, with the two larger pieces still attached to parts of a station. That is their main inter-system jump gate. Unlike what we've seen from the outer colonies, the diameter of the gate is too large for any one ship to activate, so they've put into place a gate for the sole purpose of opening their jump tunnel. Wolf turned to Gruda for affirmation, to which he nodded that she was correct. By now, the fleet had rearranged itself in a formation of a large bubble with the carrier at its core. The corvettes acted as the early warning detection system, and every other ship within waited with bated breath. As Wolf analyzed their formation and the several points of interest around the system, he then called for Minerva. During your cyber assault, were you able to find information on their home system? About that, she said, placing her arms together and resting them down the length of her dress in front of her. Their coordinates of planets are never stored on their ships. Instead, they map the coordinates of their gate access points, and they are usually relayed by beacons in the system for them to travel via sublight. Would I be correct in my analysis, Selian Gruda? He nodded silently once more to her deduction. Most established systems have a central relay that provides that information, hardly ever the ships. So it's most likely the same even for Yorla's fleet. There has to be a central area for that kind of information, because all we have leads us here, to Lassus. Would their largest trading hub carry that information? To which Minerva shook her head no. Unfortunately, that information has been lost during my recall. It is possible that during what seems to have been an abrupt departure could still house vital information on their home world, she said as she enlarged the hologram of the station in its entirety. The station seems to be in a complete shutdown, save for a few independent operating systems. It may be required to send a team to manually restore the station's systems. Very well, Wolf acknowledged. Randall, prepare a company from the 4th ODR Battalion. Yes, sir he responded before sending a message to the appropriate chain of command. Before long, the bridge received communications from the selected squad. Command, this is Corporal Strider, Raptor 4-4. How copy? They spoke, and only their static voice remained. We read you, Wolf responded. Are your live feed recorders operational? Aye, sir, he responded quickly. Waiting until we land to preserve battery life. Understood. Wolf responded and sat in his chair. There was an icon present departing from one of the smaller frigates in a small combat troop transport, and the designation above their pip read Raptor. 
They were the fourth squad of the fourth platoon to all of Raptor Company, which was broken up into four platoons and subsequently into four squads, with roughly eight to thirteen members in any given squad. However, whenever they were separated into squads, they would attach the numerical designation of their squad and their place in it, hence the corporal's call sign of Raptor 4. 4. A leading view screen near the center of the bridge, just above the hollow table, showed a magnified visual of the landing areas of the station that faced out towards the void. Smaller landing zones were external pads, while spots for larger ships could find themselves in enclosed hangars that were situated on the far edges of the landing pads. It was in the center area where docks extended out from the station for the much larger ships to park and engaged with the docking system. However, they were blown asunder, and debris covered the entrances, with a final seal by the walls of the station itself. The ship that Raptor Squad was aboard was a standard troop transport. It was sleek in its design, with aggressive yet well-proportioned angles. It was a twin-engine ship with wings, foldable wings for atmospheric flight that were extended when in its normal combat flight status and offered the pilot a 360-degree vector of motion to maintain its place in space. The central compartment housed a transport module and was fitted with a series of five seats on either side of the main aisle, with weapon racks fitted to the sides of each seat for the occupant. It was flown by a single pilot and a co-pilot that operated the external turret fitted atop the craft. To finish, the paint job for it was black with a matted silver trim, and the visage of a flamed skull was painted on the sides in red. The craft moved closer to the station, and before they reached their insertion point, live feeds from the 13 raiders filled two complementary screens above the center table. The visuals each gave a perspective of their origin, and it changed as they looked around at each other, spoke, checked their gear, or gave fist bumps and handshakes before combat. It was practiced and had now become a tradition among existing soldiers, with each having their own special habit before entering a combat space. They had then filed out of the craft and systematically approached their target entry. They stacked along the sides of the dilapidated entry point. They attempted to open the set of doors with a panel that it was connected to, but found it was no longer supplying power. One of the members then retrieved a tool from his utility pouch and began torching the doorway. The light it gave off was bright and illuminating. Even the dimly lit bridge was brightened up by the act. Wolf then spoke into a transmitter to Strider for him to relay it to the squad. You have your mission. Turn on the station so we can get that intel. You are weapons free on any hostiles that present clear danger, he said, acknowledged by the team. Through the lenses of the point man, a second set of doors were revealed that would lead into the main corridor. Like with the previous door, they breached it with a torch, and the raiders, with their suppressed, short-barreled rifles, led a tactical charge. The views of each person were more of the same, run down and hastily departed quarters and open spaces. Trash littered the walkways and the corridors were dingy, with the windows providing little light from the planet. The initial corridor extended far along their side of the station, connecting many of the platforms and hangars. The space itself was small for the group, but for the average Cellian, seemed sufficient in height. They halted at a junction that led left when the squad leader stopped and opened a holographic map at the center of his group. It was a diagram of the station with a predestined route devised by Minerva before their expedition. Gruta spoke on the technology. Is that wise? It looks like your hollow map produces quite the source of light. If anything, I can assure your people will not be able to see what we see, Minerva answered. That is as much as you are required to know. Gruda grumbled and returned to his seat, the scene now returning to the series of visuals of the breaching team. They traversed the halls like water, with their guns forward and canted to just below their sight lines. Clear, was said throughout their comms in a calm and gruff tone, as they searched rooms only to find them empty with stagnant air. Looks like they left in a hurry, the squad leader said. Might find more once we get systems up and running. Wolf acknowledged, and Raptor Squad continued with their route. Their progress was uninterrupted and uneventful, but their sights were fear-inducing to the weary. The sights were similar to scenes from a horror film. Dimly lit halls and severely aged walls 
that looked like something had crawled out from them, revealing wires and maintenance panels. After making their way through the port corridors, the team finally made their way to a set of double doors. They looked at the map in hand, and it led to a large atrium that extended along the side of the station, and a path for vehicles and pedestrians was present. The scene was grim and gruesome. Trash was littered about, and so were bodies lying about in piles. What the hell? A soldier taking point muttered. The feeling was shared among the crew on the bridge. One of the soldiers, a dedicated corpsman, examined some of the closest bodies while the rest of the squad took position around the scene. Wolf focused on the corpsman's POV camera and enlarged it, pushing aside the smaller ones of the squad. Plenty of wounds, neither bullet nor plasma. Elongated slits indicated sharpened edge, along with multiple lacerations along their arms. Defensive posture. Wounds are old, weak, weak and a half, give or take. Wolf noticed Gruda on the sidelines clutching his stomach with another hand over his mouth. There had yet to be a mess, so Wolf figured he had not vomited. The trash can is behind you, Randall said, noticing Wolf's sightline, to which Gruda promptly made his way and proceeded to vent the contents of his stomach. The crew turned back to the monitors. Got blunt force trauma here on the head. Forearms. Torso. The corpsman continued with a tone of impartiality that struck Gruda wrong, but ceased whatever he was about to say for fear of scrutinization from Minerva. Out of the subjects the corpsman studied, many were victims of violent and savage attacks by use of a deadly weapon, and he speculated knives and blunt force objects. Keep your eyes open, assume hostile activity, and get ready to engage, the squad leader ordered, to which his squad responded with a unison, Ra. They moved forward according to their map, but instead of pulling up their map each time, a waypoint was digitally placed at junctions. It's a small and transparent blue upside-down triangle with a distance meter above it to indicate how much is left until the turn or the objective. As they ventured further into the heart of the station, the sight grew darker and much more sinister. Instead of piles littered on corners, there were now corpses strung about from the ceilings, many dismembered. Audible gags were sounded from even the troopers on the ground, but they maintained their heading and continued forth. Wolf then called out to Minerva. This doesn't seem right, Minerva. In what regard, sir? She replied. You remember those ships that ambushed Vale and his force? She nodded and gave an affirming nod. Knowing what we know now, their travel would have taken them through this system, but it seems largely abandoned. Can you do a deep scan of the planet? As much as I would like to. Again, I have already found no traces of life forms aboard the station, nor on the planet's surface and subterranean structures. Even maintaining constant awareness for said ships is proving a strain on our scanners. Wolf looked now to the display of the large station in orbit of the planet. Why would they abandon such a vital system? He muttered to himself. It wasn't a rogue program you left them, he said to the motionless Minerva. I will agree that I was pulled away from my duties during that time. It is possible a fragment has been left behind. As she was about to finish her sentence, a call came through from Raptor Squad. Command, this is Raptor 4. 4, do you copy? We found the power core booting up now. Wait, not yet. Before Wolf could stop him, Minerva reported a rise in electrical power and a series of individual signatures. Sir, Reporting a large contingent of electronic forces en route to our breach team. They have three minutes. The numbers are in the hundreds. They may not have the capability to neutralize the forces. Can you connect to the system? Shut down whatever it is we woke up? One moment, sir, she said, her body still before her motion was regained in her idle movements. It is unfortunate, but something is preventing me from interacting with the station's system. Prepare the drones. Before he could complete his sentence, a warped message was sounded from the displays of the raiders, twisted in its execution and announcement. I am your phantom, your sword, my enemy. I, I to die shall be done. In the next moment, the signal cleared and the comms transmitted zero traffic, except for those on the bridge and on the ground. What the hell was that? It sounded like it was in my head, one of the raiders said. His transmission was filled with static but was still clear compared to the message they had just received. Minerva, what was it? 
Wolf demanded. Unknown, it did come without a doubt from the station. I urge the raiders to expedite their process to the intelligence archives before whatever it was we woke up swarms them. You heard her, boys. Get that intel, then we can blow that station into the planet, Wolf said with haste. Aye, sir, they responded and set off with sprints toward their destination while still taking care of their awareness of an unknown element. Would you still like activation of the Owl Drones, Admiral? Minerva asked. No. They may get compromised if they enter the sphere of the station. Send in a squadron of fighters to assist. Keep the frigates out of its range and maintain network security. Yes, sir. Defense protocol Minerva activated. Attempting system override. Failed. Accessing external sensors. Failed. Isolating signal source. Success. Isolation protocol initiated. Source found. Attempting digital telemetry. Backdoor access. Failed. Analyzing matrix identity. 46.6667%. Turcom net security status. Safe. Updating firewall protocols. Awaiting further orders.